so we are going to continue with uh, part three of uh, showers of uh, blessing. We saw part one, part two, part three of the showers of uh, blessing. The reason why I've decided to be teaching a series when the Lord gives me a message is so that I don't rush into things and don't put so much information and at the end people uh, forget. So it's better to give them in bites, but uh, each bite, will, each bite we expound, expound, expound again in the name of Jesus. First of all, I want to say thank you for each one of you that have made the effort to come this morning uh, under this uh, rain. So thank you very much for all of you. Now, we stopped at point number five. We covered point uh, one uh, was uh, if you fear God, uh, there is a uh, latter rain and a former rain for you. Point two was expect the resistance in life, opposition in life. Point three was God, uh, the doors are opened. Uh, no one can shut them. And then point uh, in um, part two, we started with point four, cooperate with God for the showers to come. And then point five was uh, pray that the rain uh, comes down on earth as it is in heaven. That was point five, yes. Okay, so today we start with point six and the showers of uh, blessings again. So the point number six is actually the secret of the Lord is with uh, those who fear him. The secret of the Lord is actually with the people who fear God. God has many, many secrets that he wants to share with his children. As he only shares them if you fear him. And we find again what the fear of the Lord is. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and to depart from it. So if you hate evil and you depart from it, you are going to be a good candidate for God to come and share the secrets with you. Many are praying, God, share your secrets with me. I want to be your friend. They don't know why God is not sharing the secrets with them. Because the secret of the Lord is only with those who fear him. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm, chapter 25, verse 14, the book of Psalm, chapter 25, verse 14, the Bible says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. When you and I fear the Lord, God comes and visits us. He wants to share with us his secrets, and he wants to cut a covenant with us. When Abraham feared the Lord, God paid him a visit and God caught the covenant with him. So the secret of the Lord is truly with those who fear him and with He wants to cut the covenant with them. There is a general covenant that uh, we have, a new covenant for us. But God comes and makes a personal covenant with the individuals. And that's what God wants to do for each family, for each individual, for each church. God wants to cut a covenant with each one of us. But the beginning of it is you need to fear. He wants to cut it, to come with you in your business. He 
also come to program you to with your children. In your career, in every aspect of your life, God wants to cut the covenant with you. And God is going to operate in your life based on that covenant. But the beginning is you need the fear of the Lord. He's going to tell you the secret. Because Father Abraham feared the Lord, God cut the covenant with him. And he could tell him the secret about his children, the secret about his future. I'm going to make you great. And for you, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. Because Isaac feared the Lord, God came and cut the covenant with him. It was not the covenant that he made with his father. God came and made a personal covenant with him. Isaac as well. He restated the plan that he had for his father Abraham. This is what I say to Abraham, and this is also what I'm saying to you, Isaac. And uh, he, when Rebecca was pregnant, God could tell him the secret about those uh, children that actually had two nations uh, in him. One will become greater than the other one. So the first one right is going to go to Jacob, not to uh, Israel. The secret of the Lord are only with those who fear him. And when you fear him, you become a candidate for him to come and cut a personal covenant with you, with your family, with your church, and so on and uh, so forth. Now, having said that, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, he says, God wants to reveal secrets to you. What kind of secrets? He says, things that I have not seen, things that the ear has not heard. It does not even enter into the heart of men and women, but God has kept them secret or has observed them for those who love him. So if you fear the Lord, it makes you love the Lord. Because Jesus says, if you love me, then keep my commandment. So if you fear the Lord, God has a secret for you. He has things for you that human eyes have not seen yet. So he has secrets for you that the inventions that the human ears have not heard about it yet. People have not even conceived those plans in their heart yet. And he wants to reveal them to you. Because you fear him, you love him, so he wants to tell you secrets. Now let me take an example. Father Abraham, I told you already, he loved the Lord, he feared the Lord, so God came and told him secrets. And even concerning his uh, business, everybody in the days of Abraham, they were nomadic people. So the nomad, they will not be in one place, they will be traveling in the country from one place to the other. So today you come, you will see Papa Pierre raising his cattle in Goa. Two weeks later, he has moved and is now in Bahe, raising his cattle in Bahe. So when you come looking for him to buy some of his goods, he's no longer there. So you have to check, and there's no mobile phone. There is no email. So how will you find it? So there were nomadic people moving from one place to the other. And if the cattle also, they are traveling too much, they are not going to be fat. They are going to be lean. But God now gave an idea to Father Abraham. He said, Abraham, you guys are nomadic people. I don't want you to be nomadic anymore. 
I want you to stay in one spot. I want you to dig wells. So the reason why you are moving from one place to the other is because when the rain stops falling, then you have to move elsewhere to find the green pastures for your cattle. But if you dig wells, even if the river dries up or the lake dries up during the dry season, you will have water from the well to quench the thirst of your cattle. You'll be able to water the ground and have some uh, straw, some uh, herbs, so that your cattle can graze. Father Abraham was the first one to have a ranch. It was a new idea. He had a ranch. So because he is a, he is a goat, he is a cow, going on traveling all over the place, they were not lean anymore, they were now fat. And his customers could find him every time. He was always at the same location. So that's why he became very rich. Genesis chapter 13. Abraham was very rich in silver, in gold, and in cattle. God gave him an idea that no eye have seen in his generation because they were all nomadic people. No ears have heard about it because they were all nomadic people. That's not even conceived in the heart of their generation. But God revealed that to Abraham because Abraham loved him. So when you read the Bible, there are many information in the Bible. Father Isaac, there was a famine in the land. He wanted to go down to Egypt like his father. And God said to him, No. Sometimes God will teach us a secret. And we don't teach it to our children. Abraham had died, and they filled all the wells with the dirt. So he didn't feel all the way with you. So you need to go back and step again. Nobody, now that there is a drought, no grass. So let's move to each one. There is a rain. I thought there is a Nile River. Go so there, there is a water. There, there is a rain. So we will have water for the cattle and the grass for the, the cows. Uh, so for them to graze. I said, no. Don't you remember what I told your father Abraham? Think again the wells of your father and create that irrigation system. And uh, you shall prosper. In that year, when everybody else was a kind of kind, Abraham, his father Isaac, works strong. He became a richer even than the king of the land. And they feared him. The secrets of the Lord are with those who fear him. And he will have a covenant with them, a covenant to prosper them. I am the Lord your God. You know, in chapter 8, verse 18. I am the Lord your God that gives you power to get uh, wealth. So because you fear him, he has a purpose in his heart to bless you. And he will give you I think that I knew not recycled ideas it will show you the way how to prosper. Abraham was 75 on his study to follow the Lord. So, regardless of your age, God wants to prosper in every aspect of your life. Now, in the book of uh, Jeremiah, Chapter 29, verse 11 to verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to verse 13. God is saying to us that He only had good thoughts, good plans concerning each other. But the Lord said, For I know God is not uh, uncertain about your future, He already has planned the future. Now it's up to you to discover 
the secret of God concerning your life, what He has done concerning your future, in every aspect of your life. For so I know the thoughts that are being toward you, says the Lord. They are also this word shadow from the word shalom, restoration. I will restore to you the year that the children of God was born. Was it? it is word shalom. So from shalom we have the word shalom, peace. So when we talk about it, this is about restoring everything uh, in your life, in every aspect of your life. The Lord says, I know the thoughts that I, the Lord your God, brings towards you. They are both uh, peace, shalom. I want to restore everything, nothing broken and nothing missing in your life. I want to give you a future and I want to give you a hope. So, verse 12, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So when you call upon the Lord, he will listen to your prayer. Then verse 13 is very important. You need to know verse 13. Why do we need to know verse 13? Because many of us we know Matthew 7, verse 7. All of us know Matthew 7, verse 7, but we don't know Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Matthew 7, verse 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Seek. And you shall find for everyone who asks receives. For everyone who knocks to hit the door is open. And everyone who seeks finds. But uh, Jesus did not tell you what was the condition. You are always a head at the tail. Your path to do. And uh, the people in the book of James, they were asking. But we've been asking and we did not receive. Jesus says, There is something that you don't know. But God, we've been asking. Why are we not receiving? He said, Because you are asking the least. You want to lavish it upon yourself. Your motives are wrong. Your heart is not straight towards God. Your loyalty is not towards God. God knows that you are just have to play it. God is not a fool. So it is when you seek him with all your heart. So that's what Jesus left out. That it is your responsibility to find out what is your that's why at home Jesus would explain to his disciples this is the way to get it. But it's the public, he just spoke in parable, they will not understand. My job is to tell you. How to get it done. So now, first we're that about Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah tells us the secret. Jeremiah says, After you've prayed, you've, you've gone home, God has listened to you, and you will seek me and find me only when you search for me with all your heart. This is with all your heart. God wants to know if you truly want it. I talk to many people. They say, Pastor Jerry, I want to go to Canada. I said, Amen. Two weeks later, I think I want to go to Australia. I said, Amen. Four weeks later, I think I want to go to Germany. I said, Amen. You always say, I must say, Amen, because when you are going to make up your mind what you truly want to do in life and what you truly want to live, then I will pray. I'm not wasting my time. When you don't even know what you want, what do you want? Those that have doubts, they are like the wave of the sea, towards the to and fro. They are going to receive nothing. From the Lord. When you are praying, you need to be single minded and single hearted, not a divided heart. This is what I want, God. Whenever you put all your heart into something, God knows that you are serious about it. I want to start business. 
Okay. Are you fully committed to that business? Or oh, even when you are doing business, but you are still working part time because you need to pay the rent. But the majority of your effort must be that uh, business. And uh, as soon as you have the opportunity, then you start reducing the hours from your job so that you can focus on your business. But God called into the ministry. Hallelujah. Did you read your Bible? No. Why? Well, you're not serious. <laughs> you are not serious. You are not uh, committed. Your heart is not uh, fully committed to what you say that God has called you to do. God does not like people that are look old. He'd rather you be completely cold or you be hot on fire. But if you are on a big tomorrow, a gentle mind, you are going to receive no favor from the Lord. And the, the sooner you make up your mind about what you want in life, the quicker the Lord will answer that prayer. So in every aspect of life, God is advising each one of us to put 100% of our heart into what we are doing. If we believe that this is what God has called us to do. When people call me, approach I want to start a business, I always ask them, what did God say? Because if it is just based on feeling to want to keep a business, because business is hard, ministry is hard. I want to be married. Have you counted your cost? So, what did God tell you? What is your own? Because at the end, you're not going to be the only one to pray, to fast, to read the books, to do the investments. For five good years, the sister Lisa was paying, sister Esther was paying all the employees, she was collecting the salary herself. Because when you start a business in the beginning, you do everything yourself. Few people will help, but you are the one that go without any salary. So you need to sit down and count the cost because there's a price uh, to pay. You need to be serious in what you want in uh, life. Your heart needs to be 100% into that. Uh, the individuals that give 100% into what they uh, believe that God has told them to do, that uh, reap the greatest uh, reward. Even in ministry, those that have forsaken everything, they're the ones that receive a hundredfold. That's what uh, God said to Peter. Peter said, We've forsaken everything and followed you. What are we going to receive? So there's no one that has left father, mother, wife, children, land for my sake as of the gospel and is not going to receive a hundred fold. When I was praying to God, God, I don't want to have 60 fold. I don't want to because the problem of the sower, some will receive 30 for those that even land on the good ground, depending on how they are sold out. Some will receive 30 fold return, 100 fold, 60 fold return, 100 fold return. I was troubled. I said, I don't want 30 fold, I want 100 fold return. Forsake everything and follow me. That's when I forsook everything and I followed them. Jesus. All the conditions are written in the Bible. So when you read, when you ask the Lord questions, He is going to answer you. The secret belongs to you. And if you fear him is going to reveal you, God does not hide it. See the glory of the man that I have a king to conceal. See the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search them out. God conceals the kings on purpose so that you are going to draw close to him and have a relationship with him. And then you can say to him, This is the secret, my son. This is the secret, my daughter. 
point number seven. Make sure that you saw something during this rainy season. You need to make sure that you saw something during this rainy season. Don't fold up your hands. You need to sow something. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 to verse 11. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 to verse 11. The Bible tells us, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Whatever intelligence you think you have, whatever wisdom you think you have, the wisdom of God supersedes your wisdom. God can do exceedingly. In the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, now to him, God, who is able to do Uper et perisos uper. That's how it is in the Greek. Uper et perisos uper. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you may ask or think according to the power that is at work in you now. Now, uper et perisos uper is, we translate that word in English exceedingly abundantly above all you ask. But God, what he's saying in Greek is that when you look at uh, what has happened in the past, what was done in the past, God will do greater than that. When you look at the, the past, in, even in the history, God is going to do greater than that. When you also project yourself in the future, even those that are not born yet, and what they are going to do, God is going to even do more than what they are going to do. That's what he said to Solomon. No one is going to be as rich as you are. Solomon, even up today, is the richest man that ever lived. His personal wealth was 500 tons of gold. That's the equivalent of 3 trillion pounds. Forget about uh, some, uh, uh, the Facebook guy, the Amazon guy. They are dwarfs. When God said to Solomon that uh, no one is going to be as rich as you are, who pay, who pay resource, who pay in the past and in the future, no one will ever match your wealth. Can we believe what God is saying to us? What is it to Abraham? I'm going to make your name great. Through you, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. Everybody to be claiming that the father is Abraham. The Muslims, our father is Abraham. We are the sons of Ishmael. The Jews, our father is Abraham. We are the sons of Isaac. The Christian, our father is Abraham through Christ Jesus. All the families of the earth. Nobody is claiming Irish Krishna. Nobody is claiming any other word lesson. No, but everybody is fighting to be part of the family of Abraham. I'm going to make your name famous. I'm going to say to Abraham in modern English. Everybody wants to have to share in Abraham. So, Uber, Edmund, is those Uber. In the past, it has never been heard or seen. That I have not seen, ears have not heard. Nobody has even conceived that in the heart, but he has that in store for you. Whatever idea you think you have, God has better ideas. So consult the Lord, and He's going to reveal the plan to concern your life. So He says, As the rain, verse 10 of Isaiah 55, as the rain comes down. And the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, okay, and make it bring forth and what that it may give seed to the sower 
and read to the Hebrews. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me for the path. It shall accomplish what I please. We read it. We don't pay attention. God says he's going to give seed to the sower and the bread to the eater. Which one comes first, the seed or the bread? The seed. How do you get the bread? From the seed. So actually what God did, he gave you seeds. You decide which part of that uh, wheat seed or barley seed you are going to grind it in powder to make some flour and cook your, your bread. And which part of that same seed that you are going to save so that you can do your planting? Unfortunately, when God gives things to people, what they end up, what they end, end up doing is eating all the seed. They will grind everything to make it bread. Don't eat all your seed. Don't turn all your seed into bread. Separate it. Some that you are going to eat and some that you are going to sow. What do I mean? We all have 24 hours in a day. That is the seed that God has given up to us. You can decide to eat up all those 24 hours and not to sow anything. But you can sow those 24 hours. You can say, let me sow 10% of those 24 hours in a prayer. It is a sowing. I don't have time to pray. You go take the seed of 24 hours and you ate all those 24 hours. Use that. You did not sow something in your personal relationship with God. Friendship is a seed. The one that wants to have a friend itself must be friendly. Are you sowing the seed of friendship? Nobody is friendly to us. Are you friendly to someone? Everything is a seed. So don't eat up all your seed. So, because when it's going to come back to you, it's going to come back good mention, shaken together, running over. So shall God give it to your bosom. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. When you give your friendship, when you give your time to prayer, when you give your time to helping other people, when you sow the seed of mercy, God is going to give back to you. Good measure, press down, check it together, run neighbor over. Just eat all your seed. Life is in the form of a seed. Everything is in the form of a seed. If you understand this parable of the seed, Jesus, you will understand everything about the kingdom. If you eat your seed, you are going to remain alone. As long as the seed does not die, what is the seed? So you don't bury that seed, it does not die. It's a bind alone. If you eat that seed, why well, that's it, it is finished. But if you sow it and you allow it to die, it will bring forth much fruit. If you are friendly, you are going to have many friends. So, do the sowing during this time. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to verse 10. Paul tells us, my brothers and my sisters, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Why? Because God is not a mocked. God is a just God and He is not a mocked. Why? Because whatsoever the man or woman sows, that also He will reap. 
What you sow is what you are going to reap. So if you decide to sow in the flesh, and the flesh, you are going to reap corruption. If you decide to sow in the spirit, and the spirit you are going to reap everlasting life. What does it mean sowing in the spirit, and what does it mean sowing in the flesh? Because if we do not understand it, then we go away and not know what God is uh, saying and how to do it. Whatever you are doing, what the word of God says, is so in the spirit. And you are going to reap everlasting life. Not just we are going to go to heaven, but also the blessings that are attached to that soul we are going to come to you. Whenever you do things that are contrary to the word of God, what are you going to reap? We are going to reap corruption. Things that are bad, that the Bible says if you do this, you are going to reap bad things. I said before you, life and death, blessings and curses, good and evil. You choose what kind of seed are you going to sow. And based on what you sow, you are going to reap it. The book of Hosea says, He that sows the wheat is going to reap world wheat. World wheat. Meaning, if you are part of you are always sowing the seed of strife, arguments. What do you think will come out of it? I want peace. But you are always quarreling with everybody. You are sowing the seed of the world, the wind. They are going to reap a tornado. They are going to destroy your house. If you don't sow friendship, you are always Attacking your friends. Guess what? Every friendship that you have is going to fall apart. We choose what we sow. Based on what we sow is what we are going to do. He that the same book of Hosea says, he that sows mercy is going to reap what mercy in abundance. So if you want goodness and mercy to be following you all the days of your life. Be sowing also mercy. If you want the goodness to follow you, you also need to be sowing the goodness. Do good to people. So we are quoting Psalm chapter 23, verse 6. It shows goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life. But we are not doing any sowing of that goodness and any sowing of that mercy. So guess what we are going to reap? Nothing. Do we understand this principle of the sowing? Whatever you want. That is Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, verse 20. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, verse 20. He says, Therefore, whatsoever you want men to do unto you, you also do it unto you. And that is the fulfillment of Moses and all the prophets. Whatsoever you want people to do to you, you also want to do. So, Paul now goes on to say to us, let us not go weary in doing good. Don't be weary in good. Why? For in due season, you shall reap. You are going to reap. Don't be tired of helping people. Don't be tired of doing good to people. People are going to be sure you do it as much matter. You keep on sowing the what is good in due season. You are going to reap good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. Therefore, he says, don't faint in your heart. So we are going to reap if we do not faint in our heart. So we do not give up. That was so don't give up, don't pray. Man always go to pray and not pray, but not give up. Don't give up. Someone has wounded you. Don't say, I'm no longer going to help anyone else because this person stole my money. Who cares? He's just a stupid person. Whosoever does a bad to you, God is going to repay you. Good. That's why I laugh. And people do me harm because I know the word of God. You do me harm, God is going to bless you. The more you steal from me, 
The more God blesses you. That's why Jesus was not worried about Peter stealing from the birds. You need to know the word of God. So, don't grow weary in drink for juices you shall be. So, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, but especially to those who have the household of uh, faith. My priority is for the house of prayer for all the nations. Like I said, I'm not the pastor of all Glasgow. I am the pastor of the house of prayer for all the nations. I used to be a fool before. <laughs> and then I read the Bible and just said, no, this is your fear. Focus on what I have given you. Let that proverb here also focus on his own field. So whatsoever the man souls, that is what he's going to reap. You don't need to envy anybody. Now, if you sow nothing, you are going to reap nothing. That's how simple it is. If you sow nothing, you are going to refer to In the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, from verse 30 to verse 34. Proverbs, chapter 24, from verse 30 to verse 34. This is one of the scriptures that uh, when I came to the previous church that I was in 2007, the, the deputy chair of the CEO was having a conference and they quoted that scripture. It impacted my life and uh, I knew it, but I did not know where it was in the Bible. Whatsoever man sows or woman sows, this is what he's going to read. You will determine how God is going to use you, how far God is going to take you in your life, in your business, in your marriage, with your children, with your career, with your church. You will determine it. Not the God. You. So, as a Christian, we are not supposed to be lazy. As a Christian, we are not supposed to be lazy. Now, this is what Solomon tells us. The pastor is not a lazy man. He's not a lazy woman. He's not. My brother, he was preparing the sermon. In this church, he preaches uh, once or twice a month. So it takes me a whole week to prepare the sermon. I just laugh. <laughs> now you know. Now you know it is not just I wake up, I go to Google. Not just I go need to speak to you too. So you need to spend time in prayer, in fasting, to hear from the Lord. You need to have a deposit of the word of God in you. So God is going to give you only one sentence. And out of one sentence, you are going to preach you for three hours. You need to eat the book first of all. I thought to say to to, uh, to John and to Jeremiah to Ezekiel, eat the book first of all. You need to know it properly. It was a time I used to read sometimes 50 chapters of the Bible a day. I used to spend time with the Lord sometimes 14, 18 hours a day with the Lord. So how do you think we wrote all those 32 books? So even in ministry, if you are lazy, you're not doing any planting. Even on TBN, we have had a focus on TBN partners. Okay? So, Richard prepares for TBN partners. And as I'm praying, I see a vision. And I send him because I know that the Lord is going to preach to all the parts. So I sent him an email with the scripture and I explained to him what are the applications for the partners of Christian uh, So he sent me back another thing. We compare notes and said, so most of the programs 
uh, uh, CBN uh, um, for the partners, I see 99 percent of them before they get so truly. <laughs> So it's not just the voice of healing that will let you in. So people know that you know the word of God, you hear from the law, it takes diligence. So there is no room for laziness. So this is what Solomon says in his book of wisdom. He says, I went into the field of a lazy man. And by the vineyard of the man is devoid of understanding. If you are lazy, if I am lazy, I am devoid of understanding. I pray to God, go do a miracle. God say, no, do something. I've opened the door. I'm sending the rain. Do something. Don't just pray. Do something. Don't be lazy. Do something. But the lazy man, when you go view his field, you view his uh, vineyard. Now, verse 31, what is uh, the field that you are going to see? And there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with the nettles. Its stone was, its stone was, was broken. He did not even have the time to repair his path. Everything was destroyed. We had gone all over the place because he was a lazy. My uncle was in the village. He stole, first of all, he was a banker. He stole a hundred million from the back, so they put him in jail. So, after he has restored some of the money, they still kept him for five years in jail and then they released him. So, he went uh, back to the village. My grandfather was the chieftain of the village. He had lands. But, my, fa my father also, his grandfather was the chief of the next village. So my father would like to help uh, uh, villagers so that they would, instead of stealing and doing the drugs, so that they can have some money. So he would go to the village and uh, he will sow the land. Ten acres. No, not acres. Ten hectares. Twenty hectares. It was more that the land was lacking. Only your strength. And even if you were not keen into farming. You can pay some lay women that are going to do that. They will weed out the land, they will clear the cow, and they are going to plant the seed. So you could plant up to 20 hectares. And even if you just planted cassava root, one hectare, uh, hectare of cassava root, the yield, when you sell everything, you pay everybody, you're going to have one million uh, of uh, our currency in those days, which was equivalent of a thousand pounds. When the minimum wage in those days was 20 pounds. So if you planted 10 or 20 hectares, you would have at least 20. Million. You have at least 20 million. Look at this baby. Uh oh. Okay. You have at least 20 million. But you're also too lazy to do anything. You will sit. I've been drinking the palm wine all day long. I've been playing checkers. I've been playing Ludo. He knew everything about the Ludo game. He knew everything about the uh, checker game. And would always be begging for money. My grandfather did not believe that women should study. 
you did not pay one penny for the education that is built. My grandmother, what she did, she tilled the ground. She planted cassava wood. Every summer, when my mother came back from a boarding school, she will plant at least five hectares of cassava. And she will go to boarding school because it will take at least nine months or 12 months before you can harvest, depending on the, the, the type of cassava wood that she's planted. So when she finishes school, she comes back, she will harvest those cassava sell them and that was a man my mom paid for all the education only when she was coming to Belgium that's when my grandfather realized that uh, I think that the daughter is going to be and he gave my grandfather my mother the people at the pounds but the whole life of my mother my father never gave one penny for education and here is my uncle with all that land and begging why he told his place. And his field was overgrown with the wheat. You know that the father did not give us inheritance, he had an inheritance. Each one of us, we have an inheritance. Inheritance. So you don't have to envy anybody. God is going to stand away on every head. God has given each one of us a seed. We can either eat all of our seeds or decide to split it in two, eat some as bread and plant the other one. But don't spiritually lazy. Because if you are lazy, you are going to reap nothing but thorns and thistles. And the Bible says, verse 32, when I saw it, I considered it. I considered it well. And I looked on it and received instruction. So I received instruction. The Bible says, a little sleep. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. Truly, poverty is a mindset. But the God that we serve, He wants to open the door. You want to reveal secret to his children. And the children are folding up their hands. I don't want to do anything. Listen, even myself, Pastor, I put my degrees aside. I want to wash dead bodies. They were called, they, they used to like me in the care homes because I would wash all the dead bodies. Why was I washing all the dead bodies? Because I would have to wash the dead. They are going to raise the dead and leave the house of dead people. Come on. So, when one person is dead in Ayrshire, they will call it there. Can, can we have a staff? I said, I know why they are calling me. So, I will go to there. They will pay a taxi for me. They will bring me one hour to Ayrshire. I will wash that body well and I will wash it up. Pray. Yes. Shall I have good religion? Hallelujah. So you swallow your pride. I need to pay for my rent. So I want to pay that. And it was David God has called me. So I'm going to fold up my hand. I'm going to wait for the church people to give money. Listen. If there is no money to pay the room, I take it for shift. That's what I've been doing. I'm not lazy. I remember even my mother used to see me. <laughs> Sometimes for 72 hours I'm not left. And I go on Sunday, I do the service. I do the Bible study on Wednesday. And my eyes are red. There is no room for laziness, no excuse. If you want to go 
places in life. There are many people who are gifted, but they are lazy. And God can't use them. I was not very intelligent. You know, some people like, was very intelligent. They you teach them one thing, they change it. But I said, I know I have some discipline in my life. My father said to me, every day you need to work minimum three hours to exercise. So when I come home, I will do my three hours of exercise. Every day without fail. So that's what made me always number one. I was not the most intelligent, but I was not lazy. I put an alarm. Even today, I have an alarm that goes off. One of them goes off at uh, 11, so at 9 p.m. because I need to pray. So in case I forget that alarm will be said to me, you need to pray. Another one goes off at 4 a.m. I need to pray. Another one goes at 5 a.m. because I need to pray with my brother. Another one goes off around 8 a.m. Because I need to jump into the shower and start driving to go to. I have a regime, regime that I follow. We all have 24 hours. It's how we decide to prioritize things in life. Why are the sanity? What am I doing? I'm fasting. What I tell you, fasting too much. I'm so weak. So, because you don't see what is in the spirit, that's why you are complaining. My father, he knew what was the year. He planted one uh, hectare of cassava. The year, the profit is going to be one million. So, depending on how much he wanted to have for that year, he decided to plow. And the villagers, they will be looking, why are you planting? Why are you tilling so much ground? It's too much. No, depending on my vision. I'm going to plow if I only want to, to have a small cassava uh, plantation so that I can eat me and my family. So I will only work for one day and that's it. I will see it. But if my vision is to sell, I remember in 1995, we were even selling the carrots, mushrooms, no, carrots, onions. Uh, cabbage, we are standing at the presidency. So we had so much cabbage, we had so much carrots, so much onion that the supermarket was taking it, the presidency was taking it. Depending on your vision, you saw. So, what is your vision? Go say to Father Abraham, as far as you can see. Are you only seeing as far as your nose, or as far as the end of uh, this uh, room, or are you seeing until the Scandinavian uh, nation? That's why. I, that's how I see. That's why I do all the. I'm tilling the ground because the planting is going to be great, and the harvest is also going to be great. So don't compare your life with another person. Because what you are seeing is not what they are seeing. As far as you can see, I'm going to give it to you. As you are going to see the ground in your house. You are going to do the irrigation system. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. My responsibility is to seal the ground, to dig a well, so that we irrigate the house of prayer for all nations. Even if there is a drought out there, and for the house of prayer for all nations, on our small piece, rain is a problem. That's my responsibility. So I do the sowing, I do the, 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 the digging to remove the dirt so that we reach the water table. 
depending on what you are seeing, that's what will also determine your sewing, your TV camera. If you compare yourself with other people, you are going to be like my uncle. He's only playing the checkers, drinking the pile of wine. He's ending into poverty. So to get a bit disciplined in every aspect of her, like if our children want to go far, they need to discipline themselves. You cannot be lazy and not wake up in the morning. No. You are not, even if you are intelligent, it's not going to work. That's laziness. And there's no rule for laziness. The walls of your house is going to be destroyed. Your field is going to be overgrown with wheat. It's going to take you so much effort to remove all that wheat. So do the right thing. Put some discipline in your life. Spiritual discipline, spiritual education, we all have 24 hours. Put some discipline. Call your parents. Listen, if you don't call your parents, your children are going to do the same thing for you or to you. Whatever you sow, you are going to reap. So be nice to your parents. Call them. That's why Sunday evening is for my family. Friday evening is for my family. I don't answer on the Sunday evening is for my family. I need to give attention to my parents, to my brothers. And the flesh as well. We should not hide from our flesh. Isaiah chapter 58, many of us are hiding from our flesh. So we are sowing the bad seed. And whatever goes around, we are sowing, we are going to reap it. Visit your parents. Call them. So in affection, in emotion, in relationship, don't want to be lazy. Call someone. Encourage someone. When you're going to be down, someone's going to call you, encourage you, and going to pray for you. People, when they pray for me, they pray for me from, from the bottom of the heart. Because I have so much good seed in the life. So good seed in the life of the people. And you are going to read. No room for spiritual laziness. Otherwise, you are going to reap weed, nettle, and thorns. And the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Proverbs, again, chapter 21, verse 25 to verse 26, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25 to verse 26, he said, The desire of the lazy man kills him. Why are his desires killing him? <laughs> For his hands refused to labor. His hand refused to labor. So he doesn't want to work, but his desires are killing him. I want to have a private jet. I want my uncle that is lazy. He was always dreaming of uh, how would he car, BMW car. He would call his uh, brother to the town. Can you send me uh, the latest how would he car? My uncle himself. Does not have an Audi car, and he is a pretty cool. He's calling me twenty two. Brother, we send him an Audi car. He thinks that we have uh, a tree here in the UK where we put the leaves, and the leaves are out on you. The lazy man, his desires are killing him because he doesn't refuse to labor. He's helping everybody else. He's hating everybody because you did not send him some Western Union. He desires are killing him because he's an idiot. And many pastors envy. We don't see miracles. Do you pay the price? Some of the people only go by prayer and fasting. Are you paying the price? Why are you envying for the Jeremy? What you are seeing today is the sowing from 2007. See today. The desires of the lazy, they kill him. 
is helping everybody, but he does not want to put the effort. He would use all kinds of justification. There is a racism. There is a reason. Listen. Don't look for excuses. Work. God is no respecter of skin color, he's no respecter of gender. Put the work, and God is going to use you. God is going to promote you. Renew your mind. Don't look for excuses. Don't look for excuses. The majority of people have got used were the humble backgrounds. And God lifted them up. So you have no excuse. God is on your side. If God is for us, who can be against us? And you are complaining, complaining, murmuring. Stand up. Go possess the land. Joshua said, We are more than able because God is with us. We are not grasshoppers. We are not a victim. Remove that victim mentality. You are more than a conqueror because greater is a he that is in you than he that uh, is in the world. So, the desire of the lazy man, they kill him. Because he refused, he said to refuse to work. He covered greedily all day long. He's dreaming about the Audi car, he's dreaming about the dead Africa, his uncle is going to, his brother is going to send him. He's just envious. So, but the righteous gives and they do not just spare. We sow into people's life. We do some work. I used to steal money from my mother's purse. Before I was converted, I thought I was doing that to help my poor peers. So I was stealing money from the purse and go buy donuts for my peers at work or people that ground. I, I felt good. So my mom knew I was the one who was the feast of the house. So when I was 11 years old, that's when we gave our life to Christ. And I read the book of Ephesus. Book of Ephesus says, Let him who steal, steal no more. But let him work with his head, so that he may have something to give to those who do not have. When I read it in the book of Ephesians, I said, God, I'm 11 years old. What can I do as a work? So I said to my mother, Okay, you have a lot of uh, plots of land. Let me go and uh, supervise how to make bricks. There was one guy, he was a brick layer. He was old, he did not have the strength, but he was not the thief. If he would put uh, two wheelbarrows, four, four wheelbarrows of uh, sand for one bag of the cement, others would be cutting close to and get him money from but he no longer had the strength. So I cut the deal with the old man. I said, old man, this is my, my muscles. I'm going to be doing the bricks. They will pay you the money, but you give me one third of the money. So he gave me one third of the money. So I had money. I was not buying things for my friends with the money that I was working for. I saw my uncle doing the salt fish. I saw it was selling for lots of money. My Christmas money that my mom gave me. I went and I bought a fish and I bought some bags of salt. I sat down to make my own salt fish. I was famous in the market with the ladies. When I would come with the salt fish, all of them, no man, come. I don't negotiate. I give you my price and you give my money. So I had to have, and then when I was 15, I had my own servant. I bought uh, uh, one of one of kind of uh, like a uh, ice uh, box, but it has wheels. They would be selling the uh, bread sandwiches by the beach and so on and so forth. So I received the scholarship, one hundred and twenty dollars. So I took all my scholarship, I invested into that thing. I had my employee, he was older than I was, he was my employee, he was selling, 
and I was having the privilege of the salary of a high school teacher. For four years, I fed all my tears. I bought all the books. I bought all the notebooks. I gave them money for transportation. I was feeding a hundred people twice a week. I sent many of my peers to school. I was no longer stealing from my father. I was now working for it. And God is going to bless the work of your hands. So Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory and we want to give you all the praise because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for speaking to us because we have a responsibility. There is no room for spiritual laziness. There's no room for sleeping again and again for hours and missing to do our chores, our tasks, our assignments. It is not in the kingdom of God. We are disciplined people because we are going blessed. But let each one of us catch a vision of our future. Give us a glimpse of our future, of the future of our children. Because the hope that you are teaching to us now is not a peace and not a evil. You want our cooperation. So let us cooperate with you so that we can receive the desire that harvest. Father, let no one of us miss it. Let us not miss it. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. We have some juice, some fruits today because we've been eating so much cake. So we are trying the fruits. The Bible says, try your food today. Or the doctor says, try your food today. Keeps the, the head sister or the doctor at the something like that. So, how's some food today? <laughs> Let's eat some cake. But how's some food? We may eat too much cake. So, God bless you all those that are online. We love you. And uh, let us eat some cake, grab some juice as well.